Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. To recap where we left off last time, um, we met the Literature Club and we officially joined, and now we have gone home for the night to write a poem uh, to share with the club for tomorrow after school, so let's dive right in. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Okay. Uh... Let's see. So, out of these three girls... Hmm... Okay, I don't think Monica... Yeah, she's not here. So I guess we have to cater to one of these girls. Um, let's start off with Precious. Death. Okay. Um. Crimson. Okay, she liked that. Fireworks. Entropy. Okay. Uh, Starscape. Mm, jumper jumpy. Whisper. Heaven sent. <laughs> Suicide. Okay. Let's uh, do Covet. So I think we're getting, we're leaning towards Yuri right now, even though we're not really trying to do that. Hmm. Whirlwind. Okay. Infinite. Oh, nice. Okay. Um. Hmm. Summer. Okay. It's Natsuki. It's like always a negative word in here, or in this case, two. Mm, dazzle. Doki Doki. Roll credits, everyone. Um, let's go with vanilla. Okay. What? Massacre? Why? I feel like this is definitely tied to Yuri. Hmm. Let's do puppy. Okay, cute. Inferno, <laughs> Jesus. Um, determination. Okay. Horror. Milk. Alright, four more words. Let's do this. Um, destiny. Vibrant. Okay. Raindrops. Defeat. Treasure. Imagination. Fireflies? Alright, last word. Gotta make it count. Passion. Hi again, Kuri. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Kuri. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayori so told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year too. 
I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out, or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Ooh, got him! Natsuki finds herself st stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Puri always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, so, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Kuri can become good friends, too! Uh, um... S Sayori... Hmm? What's going on? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Uh, oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know? W wait, Sayori... Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sigari made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. Don't make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book for you that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Oh god, this... <laughs> this reads like such a cliche anime. It kind of hurts to read out loud. Oh my god. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some schedule activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh -uh. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. Wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well... When I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. 
There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well... Hmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright? I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That is not relatable at all. What? That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Kuri? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories... They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well... I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh... That's... Well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Seriously, what are you saying? This is a literature club. Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah! Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something that I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. Reading these things in your mind is one thing, but actually saying it out loud... Oh god, it's getting so difficult. Like, I don't know if I can do a whole game of this if they just talk like this. <sighs> but I made a commitment. I'm playing this game, so I gotta see it through. So, I just gotta suck it up. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. <laughs> Sorry! I was just... 
Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? Are we gonna read together? Oh no, oh my god, we are. I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah... Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Oh my... It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah. That's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Y yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page and letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri? This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses a lot of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I... I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Kuri, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ugh, that's so embarrassing that, that you think that. Wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Oh, we broke out the C word. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. What are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Uh... New drinking game. Take a shot every time someone says eh or ah. You would die. Like within 10 minutes, I think you would die. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, there we go again. It's not... It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um... I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. 
By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? E yeah My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Um, uh, I don't know. Does it matter? Decisions, decisions, I guess. Monica, since she's the president. I should start with Monica. Yesterday, she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in effort. Hi, Kuri. Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Kuri. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Kuri. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Yeah, come to think of it, I think when we were choosing the words for our poem, I think... Yuri's icon popped up the most out of the three girls, so... Maybe I should read it to her next? Or first? I don't know. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little too biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ahahaha. <laughs> Ahahaha. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Okay, getting some different 
music. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction that sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything, a hole of infinite choices, I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. That was, uh, kind of depressing, I feel. <laughs> so, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. That's actually a really, really solid advice. From one writer to another, like... If you try to write something 100% perfect, like sentence by sentence, word by word, you're never gonna finish. You just gotta, like, get something down on paper first and then go back and tidy it up. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs> She's like a radio host or something. Who should I show my poem to next? Do I have to show my poem to everyone? Hmm. I guess Yuri. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? D did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I. Ooh. He's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? That's actually my response. <laughs> I don't know if we have. Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Beauty stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh, um... Beauty trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. 
In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with patience and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in this club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um... Okay, here comes the stammering. Well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Alright. I am preparing this... I am preparing for this to be super dark. We shall see. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Okay, I think this word says calm. That took me the longest time to read, I'm sorry. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the pure. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Alright, that wasn't too bad. That was actually pretty nice. I like it more than, um, Monica's. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. They actually commented on that. It was hard to read, yeah. Wow. That's interesting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. Uh, yes, we were. But it took you a long time to read. The game totally knows that we had a hard time reading that. That's so funny. I thought it was just me being, like, super dumb. I don't know. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That... that's... a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hoo <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Kuri. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story, or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know... I was really nervous about doing all this. 
but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Kuri. Uh, me too. We have to show our poem to everyone. Oh my god. And I'm a slow reader, so this is... <laughs> This is actually kind of tiring me out right now. I might also be a bit high on cough syrup, but that's between you and me, maybe. Um, who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's do Natsuki. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. Oh, okay. It just didn't evoke any emotions. <laughs> wow. So basically, it's not cute enough for your tastes. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Talk about super neat handwriting. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. <laughs> I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. That's nice. And last, Sayori. This is a good poem, Kuri. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously, or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy that you just wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Kuri. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. <laughs> then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm going to hold you to that, then. Yay! 
Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to tell... Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish you... Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. What? <laughs> that ended really weird. Sayori... This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No! Just, just a little bit? You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Aw, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you? Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Phew! That's actually me letting out a sigh of relief because that was so much reading. <laughs> I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. I was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monika are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? <laughs> eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feelings of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um... Well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Kuri did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... <laughs> Holy shit, she's just going off. Excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Kuri liked my poem too, you know? He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> eh? Why are anime girls like this? 
Why? That's not what I... Uh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Kuri appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh! And how do you think he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself... I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Kuri started showing up. <gasps> she did that! Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting guys. So <laughs> Suddenly both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Kuri! She, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could just get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The, the meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Kuri. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Kuri? Um... Well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Uh... Like, they both have a point. You know. We're gonna go for the neutral option. Help me, Sayuri. Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori. Eh? Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? <laughs> Could he? Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair to others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would ne- <laughs> She would never! It's your immaturity that's made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why- Okay. So like, not only is this argument actually really, really funny, it's also this music that's selling the scenes. Like, this music is great right now. Like, I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> exactly why nobody likes... Stop. Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because... well... Also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. Oh god. Anime was a mistake. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered ex expression. I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So, this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things. But I'm not very good with people. 
I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see yourself getting hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Kuri, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Kuri! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Siori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Siori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Siori. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? Oh, no, no, no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Kuri, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayuri still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayuri. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, as we approach the one hour mark, I think this is a great place to take a break. My first impression of this episode is that it's interesting. Like, I think my favorite bit so far was just like watching Yuri and Natsuki have that like long-winded ridiculous argument about each other's poems and how it just like became super rude and just oh that was so funny. I really don't know what this game is going for. I mean it's cute so far. The format is like there's like three girls right here that you can try to romance like you know Sayori your childhood friend who's the airhead you know, um, like a young freshman girl who's like kind of like a tsundere, where you get kind of like the emotional, distant girl who's like actually like very wise and like moody and mellow, kind of dark on the inside. So, like, you have three choices um, Yuri, Natsuki, or Sayori, and Monica doesn't seem to be an option. Anyways, Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. Until then. Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Kuri started showing up. She did that!